Today's tutorial is for a piece I call Lucky Number 7, or Lucky Hashtag 7. Uh, this one is seven blooms that are somewhat like edelweiss, I guess, because they are uh, white and they've got centers that are fairly large. They're not meant to be sort of bulbous centers, but more just uh, full of stamen. And I chose the green as the, the starting point because oftentimes white flowers begin as green. That was press and seal, and that's what I used to cover my Lazy Susan. I'm often asked about that. Um, scotch tape, and press and seal, by the way, is available at most any grocery store in North America. Uh, this is a Kirkland brand or Costco brand of the quality photo or photo quality paper that I use. It's eight and a half by 11 sheets. And uh, I'll take out one sheet to show you, which is the one that I'll be using. And there's that Lazy Susan I was talking about. So this has been a very uh, helpful thing to have. There's the eight and a half by 11 sheet. So the Lazy Susan's roughly 11 inches in diameter. I get asked that a lot. The front side that I showed you was the shiny side and it's the back side that we'll be working on or the matte side. So my purpose in showing you the scotch tape is that I take it, I loop it around itself with the sticky side out. I adhere it to four corners and that allows me to stick down this uh, piece of eight and a half by 11 paper in order, or cardstock, it's really paper, but in order to uh, keep it steady on my work surface, this Lazy Susan. I try not to touch it with my fingers, but I will tell you that I clean my hands, uh, even to get the alcohol link off, with um, this hand sanitizer. It has alcohol in it, and I do that so that none of the oils from my hand gets on the paper and acts as a resist to the ink. And this is the isopropyl alcohol 91% that I always use. And sorry to rattle the table. Uh, and you'll see the alcohol in a moment. I'm using two inks of color Meadow and Pesto, which are both green inks from the Ranger Tim Holtz line. <clears throat> Pardon me, and there's also a mixative in gold. I'll be using that for the center of the flowers at the very end. So a couple of tools I'll be using at the very end. One's a dotting tool, a little piece of packing that I put the ink in. The dotting tool has two different sizes. Uh, each one does, so I, I'll probably use the smaller of the two ends. And here's a little quilling bottle that I've put this isopropyl or rubbing alcohol in. Well, this will be part of the uh, technique today. And you'll see it has a very tiny, tiny little um, nozzle on it, so it allows really tiny little drops of ink. And this is my Master Pro airbrush. It is a system. It's connected by that hose that you see. It has no ink in it, by the way. Never has. Uh, not yet. I just use it for air at this point. Uh, and this, the system includes a compressor as well, which makes the air. So I'm going to start with Pesto. It's the darker of the two greens. I'm going to lay out my seven... Whoops! Oh, look at that. Not going in the garbage though, because I'm just laying out the seven centers of my flowers, and I'll just use the the boo boos that I <laughs> that I made on the page. And so yeah, things happen. Doesn't matter. Uh, this is a, a really just a very loose drawing. It's meant to look natural. In my mind's eye, I see you know flowers that have just sort of fallen, and uh, you know they're in bloom. So they can be in a number of places. I just want there to be seven on the page because as I was making this, um, I had some numbers in mind for other things, but seven always comes to mind to me as a lucky number. So, and it's nice to do an uneven, or, you know, an odd number um, in, in an art layout. It doesn't always have to be. Uh, there's very nice layouts that have even numbers, but I just thought I'd do seven. And it turned out to be a very lucky day. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I was happy and uh, now all I'm doing, by the way, is just taking my airbrush and effectively trying those little dots of ink into place in roughly round shapes. These will be the centers of the flowers. If you like perfectly round centers, then you'll want to practice making uh, those dots not only perfectly round, but make sure your airbrush or your straw or whatever's handy to keep them tame. Uh, they will tend to sort of, as you'll see as I go along here, just dropped out, yeah, that was the meadow. And there's no special formula. I'm very much, um, you know, do as how I feel at the moment when I'm in my studio. So I apologize if I don't always have exactly the name of the uh, 
the ink ready, but what happened was that I was really intent on getting as much uh, depth of color as I could from both of the colors into these centers so that when I start spreading the ink around, it will pull out some of the green. And then I'm back to the pesto. So I started with pesto, I had meadow, and then I came back to pesto. I decided that I needed a bit more darkness. And you'll actually see toward the end that uh, before I start doing the centers that I end up dropping more ink into the middle just so that there is a dark uh, base to the center anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Again, you just sort of have to move along, see how it's behaving as you'll see as we go along here, how the ink is behaving and whether or not you need more ink and you can always add it. And again, I'm going around sort of the outside of each of those circles just to uh, help the ink to dry and yeah, just make a disc of dry ink. Out comes the quilling bottle with the isopropyl alcohol. Again, it was a 91% solution. And I drop just a tiny drop and watch it. It spreads, but it's picking up ink and it's picking up both colors. And it has this great, um, again, every ink is different and every color is different, but in this case, the two inks combine really nicely to get those striations or stripes going so that you get a semblance of what you would see the veins in a, in a leaf or in a petal, as the case is here. And there's where two have gone separately. And what I do is just work the brush so that the two kind of meld together and they'll create some great shadows and some great highlights all on their own. And that's a nice one as well. I mean, I, I don't want to judge the petals. Uh, I didn't have any certain shape in mind. If you are doing this and you have, um, you know, the absolute perfect shape in mind and you want to get it exactly the same every time, my advice would be to start with one color or two colors at the most, um, at least in the same family. One's easier and just work your way through doing that color because you'll be practicing using the, the very same color over and over and that's a much less frustrating experience than trying to do several colors all at once. Um, I did a piece very recently that used seven different colors of red also in the Ranger line and they all behaved very differently. So not extremely differently, but enough that it gave me, it was a good experiment. It gave me an idea of how some of them are, a, I'll call a heavier ink than others. Um, some flow really quickly. And so in those cases, for example, when you lay down the centers, you would need to know that you really have to have something out to, to tame those inks into staying in a circle. Um, and then other colors tend to be, I'll say heavier, that's how I call them, but they flow um, more slowly and somewhat like these greens are doing and they uh, allow themselves to be managed a bit more. So I left the last petal out. I purposely stopped there and do notice the center of that flower. It's quite interesting just the pattern that's in it. You could do some very creative things with that as well. I, I've done that in the past. Um, left it or added a bit of color uh, and not necessarily done the dot technique in the center. Um, but nonetheless, I just want to point it out, it's not going to happen here. It's going to be uh, very dark and, and then highlight it with, with dots in the center at the very end. So I move on to a flower that's a bit farther away. And because this isn't um, uh, water-based, it's alcohol-based ink, it's drying very quickly. So I actually could have done the flower right next to the one I just did. I chose to try to make this um, ultimately be a very random appearance. In other words, that roughly the same number of petals on each flower, but I wanted some of the flowers to uh, cross petals over other flowers and not necessarily in a pattern. But again, if that's something that you prefer to do and have a pattern of one flower has petals that cross over another and so on, you, you can certainly do that. This is really just an example of how I work through this particular piece and, and kind of give you an idea of what was going through my mind in terms of how I um, planned it. And it's very loose planning, but yeah, there is a method um, to, to what I'm doing. Uh, like I said, I'm really trying to get a randomness so that they 
the blossoms, I want them all to, or the blooms, I want them all to appear as though they've just kind of landed somewhere very soft and are just kind of huddled together. So that was the look that I'm going for, or was going for. And as you get closer to the edge, some of them, um, I would just suggest a very tiny, tiny drop of alcohol because, and let it sit for a couple seconds longer even, but that will just give you the ability, as I'm doing there, to pull out some gray color, make just a portion of, of a petal. And then if there's any extra ink, um, what I do is just run it along the very edge of the page because quite often my pieces are cropped an eighth to a quarter, of, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch on, on each side. So I give myself a bit of a um, reserve on the edges of the paper because I know that they're going to be cropped off uh, just to allow for the, the ink, excess ink to pool. And there I've gone over to another dot that was somewhat intentional. It makes for a very long petal, but I know in nature that not every petal is exactly the same length. They can be roughly, but some flowers, um, and, and I thought of Edelweiss when I, I thought of this particular piece because it's a white flower. Um, it does have kind of random petals on it, has a sort of longer petals in the back and then shorter ones in the front. So it, uh, although I'm not saying these are Edelweiss, uh, they give me the idea uh, that, you know, here's what's available in nature. And I also sometimes create flowers that I've never seen before. I just like the way that they look or <laughs> the ink tells me that's how they're going to look. Uh, sometimes that's the option. And back to what I was saying before about how inks behave. So I'm, I'm going to speed up the uh, video in a couple of seconds because it really becomes quite monotonous and I think you have a pretty good idea of how these petals, and these could be leaves of course, um, are formed and the patterns that I use. And then you'll see toward the end that I've really made them quite random. And I've come back to some flowers that, uh, it's like the first one where I had stopped that petal. Um, I finish that one off after the uh, bloom next to it is done because it gives me a chance again to cross the petals over one another. So I'm just, yeah, I'm getting some very, very nice styrations from this particular combination of colors, which is great. And so you get that effect of the shadows and the veins in each of the petals, which is, uh, as I'm doing it, it's really quite exciting because I'm realizing, well, this is coming out beautifully. I mean, these look as though they are uh, petals that are very, very transparent or translucent, I guess you would say. And once again, the alcohol ink just lends itself so well to that kind of an appearance, almost like uh, someone uh, described this as um, chiffon. And that to me is, is so cool because to, to make that, create that out of ink, um, is just, that's an amazing thing. So here's where I've sped it up a great deal. And I don't want to belabor this, but I will say that as I do in all of my videos, uh, if you read at the very beginning uh, on the comment section, I've pinned a piece about the uh, health issues around, and it's not issues, but there are certainly health risks to be taken into account when you're using alcohol ink and the products that are associated with it. You really, really need to have great ventilation if you don't have a ventilator mask that you can wear. Uh, I do have a ventilator mask. I also have a studio with amazing ventilation, um, both an open door in you know seasonal weather, uh, but also I have ventilation that removes the uh, alcohol uh, fumes and the fumes from any of the other solutions, extenders like uh, blending solution, that kind of thing. All of this is flammable. That's just another point that I want to make. Uh, that's why there's warnings on the bottles about there being flammable. Uh, that means they can burst into flames, not spontaneously, uh, but you know, you want to keep them away from small kiddos and animals and people that have trouble breathing, uh, small kids and older people especially, can find these fumes pretty difficult and harmful. So also not a good idea for you as an artist uh, to be sitting over them and breathing them in. Um, 
you'll see also that I try to mitigate that by I'm almost always blowing away from myself and the air that's coming out of this airbrush is cool. It's not warm at all. Um, so that's lessening the risk somewhat. But again, I still take precautions and I caution you to do the same. So uh, do enjoy it. It's an absolutely amazing medium to work with. Um, but I I just feel a responsibility to pass that along. So you can see how I just want to point out the centers of these flowers because where the alcohol initially sits and picks up ink, it leaves a white piece. And if you're going around the flower to make these petals, you're creating kind of a neat um, uh, design in the center of the flower. So uh, again, you can work with that. You can make some really interesting uh, looking centers. They don't have to, have to be the same. Um, I mean, but do as you um, feel is the right thing to do. This is just a guide again to get you started and show you my technique. So I'll slow this back down in a few minutes, but I just want to show you how I turn that Lazy Susan around and really use that um, also to decide where I might need to have more color, where I want to color up or sorry, cover up um, a dot or a, uh, you know, a, a petal or a leaf that I don't particularly care for. I'll confess that toward the end, after I'd finished videoing this, I noticed there was a couple places where there were little dots of alcohol. I would also keep that alcohol bottle um, as far away from the project as you can once you've dropped your little bit of uh, alcohol down and start blowing it. Um, but I, I had dropped a little tiny bit on the piece and I corrected them after the video was over. Uh, not a great big huge correction, but you, again, it's wonderful because they're so easy to um, fix and it's a very malleable, you know, uh, medium. So I've taken some pesto, speaking about the centers, I'm sorry that's a bit off camera. You'll see the other ones in a moment. But what I'm doing is dropping um, pesto, a, a drop of the ink. Sometimes it takes two because the centers are larger. I really want to cover up and make those centers uh, not light, which would have the effect of making them sort of bow out, but dark. So to create a shadow that bows in. And the reason that I'm doing that, I actually had initially pulled out that metallic gold and then as I looked at it, I thought, well, that's not going to work because the metallic gold uh, does best when it has um, contrast. And the contrast is a dark background. It could be black. And in this case, I chose just to go with the darker of the two greens, which is the pesto, and just to uh, re-green that middle center area. So you'll still be able to tell that that's the very center of the uh, flower. Hard not to with all those petals coming out, but uh, but also dropping, and again, judge. Um, this is where your knowledge of how the colors behave is going to be very helpful because if this had been the kind of color that spread really quickly, I would not be putting in large drops like this. I'd be putting them in pretty tiny and then really monitoring the spread. So uh, with these ones, the this particular pesto ink, for example, moves fairly slowly. Um, it's not like coloring where you don't want to go outside of the lines either. It's okay if it does that. Um, but you do want to kind of stop the spread from going too much further than that edge because it's going to start covering up the great shadowing and those styrations or stripes that are going on in the petals. What you're really wanting to do is just cover up those white spots. And confession number two is that when I finished videoing this and started photographing it for um, the still photograph that I wanted, I realized that the outside, you can see there's sort of white that's left over now. And I, in a rush to kind of get things um, finished with this video, because I didn't want it to be too long, I left those white areas mm, kind of white like they are now. And it didn't show very well in the uh, stills that I took. So what I did was I went back in with a dotting tool and I put some of that pesto ink into the little uh, ink um, palette, that little piece of plastic you see on the on the right there, which I'll be using in a minute for the gold. But I went back afterward and took some of the green and filled that in a bit. 
uh, and then put a little bit of a little bit more gold on top and dotted it over so that it looked again more like a very dark center with the little stamen uh, sticking up in gold in the centers. So I was just re-showing you that that's the mix of gold. It's got a little uh, ball in the bottom because this ink contains mica, which gives it the metallic look, and it needs to be shaken really well. I put the um, little palette, you can use almost anything for a palette, as long as it's, you know, plastic or metal or glass or something. And I've taken my uh, dotting tool, I looked out for the smallest of the two ends, and this is and completely random. Um, really, again, what I'm trying to do is uh, several dots, different sizes. You will, as uh, just like with the other inks, you will, as you start using these mixatives, particularly the metallic uh, inks, you'll see where if you leave the dotting tool down, it'll make a little bit uh, larger of a dot, and if you you know, dot it very quickly, it'll be a smaller dot. I want it as random as I possibly can get, just like a flower would be. And again, I understand some flowers look perfectly symmetrical, and if that's what you're after, uh, absolutely you can do that. This is just a demonstration, and I'm giving you my rationale, so I don't want you to be sitting there going, why isn't she doing perfectly straight lines? Um, I am not the person to come to for perfectly straight lines. I need rulers to do that, and also, again, that's not the look that I was after. So I will again be speeding this up momentarily to about four times uh, the speed because otherwise this would be, uh, I think it was going to be a 45 minute video and I just didn't think that that would cut it. So I will speed this up because I think you've got an idea here of how randomly I am putting these dots down. I'm also, I, there's another boo-boo, I put down a much larger dot than I intended to, and so uh, I quickly moved to use the dot um, to provide me with more dots. In other words, I put the ink tool into the big huge dot, I move it out, make a little dot somewhere else. And, and I don't fret about it because I could come back in later with, uh, again, with the pesto. If I thought that that gold dot was just too big and it drew my eye, for example, I would just come back in with the dotting tool and some pesto ink. And I would um, effectively cut that big dot into two or three little dots just by dotting on top of it. So nothing that can't be fixed. It's all, uh, it's all good, as they say. Um, and here's where I've sped it up considerably. And boy, don't we all wish that we could work at that kind of speed. I will tell you that my hand got pretty cramped as I was going through this. And I was, uh, this ink goes a long, long way, by the way. You can, uh, I only put probably two drops in that piece of plastic. I believe I end up putting four in total. There's another little boo-boo. I just wiped it with my finger. It was, again, you're not going to notice after all of the layers of these dots are put down, and you can see um, there's also behind them the different colors and, and shades of green. And so it'll all mix together in a really beautiful way. And I just wanted to speed this up, of course, like I said, because I, I think you get the idea. Um, and here was where I had some, a little tiny bit of relief as I was able to stop. Um, and I was kind of showing yeah, where I want to go back and fix uh, a leaf. And so I decided, well, I'll do that because I've got extra ink laid down in the center. And again, I can go back and there. I went back with a little bit of the pesto and presto, as they say, it runs in a bit, doesn't matter. It's just um, an area that I wanted to fix really quickly before uh, the very end. And as I said earlier in the tutorial, I, I did a couple of fixes after the videoing was done. Um, it was, it just was not photographing correctly because of the, um, you can see the white, even the bloom closest to us at the bottom of the screen and now over toward the right. Um, it's yeah, a little bit, a little bit light around the edges. So I went back with some pesto ink to fix that up and then just added some more gold over top. Nothing that can't be fixed. So I hope that this has given you uh, a good idea of the techniques uh, as far as blowing of the ink and I did want to get across that every ink behaves very differently I, I would recommend that you start out uh, thinking of it as an experiment and begin with one ink or two inks at the most so that you can really feel as though you're 
um, your method of holding the brush or the straw or whatever it is, the air can, to use the air, um, it, you can start getting a feel for how that works uh, and what kind of effects you're going to get. And the best way of doing that and getting a really good idea of of your own technique and the way that you hold the brush or the can or whatever it is, is to use an ink that behaves very much the same on the page. And my hope, of course, is that you then start creating some things that you find very beautiful as a consequence. And that's the whole idea. So I'm going to wrap it up fairly quickly here. I really did want to um, finish it up as much as possible and show you that I use the Lazy Susan to uh, my advantage because I can move those uh, flowers around and close to me and then far away and, and look at them from a number of different angles. And as I've said in many of my videos before, quite often what I do is I stop, I take a picture, I crop it, I fix the light, I fix um, the color, make it as close as possible to the work that I'm doing, and then I decide uh, if there are areas <clears throat> pardon me, that I'd like to readdress or, you know, fix, <laughs> as it were. And that's pretty much what happened in this particular case. So in this case, I'm, I think this is where I say it is a wrap. And I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. And I'll leave you with the image so that you can look at it close up for a few more minutes. And thanks for joining me.